guys, my name is Luke and welcome back to Potion and Design. So I recently watched uh, Lord of the Rings uh, latest um, series, The Rings of Power, and I really liked the intro. The series itself is okay, but the intro I thought was super cool. So I thought I would try and recreate the effect. I think the way that they did it was they actually did it practically. I'm basing that on the fact that the first intro that they made with the lava, that was done practically. So I think this one was done practically by vibrating the plate with different frequencies to have the rocks move in certain ways. So there were three effects in the intro that I wanted to re recreate. The first one was the rocks coming together to form different shapes, which looked very cool. The second one was this kind of void effect where all the particles are kind of going into the center, which was very nice. And then the third one was this kind of like liquid rock effect where a there was a body of rocks and another bunch of rocks kind of went through it in a very liquid motion. So yeah, those were the three effects that I wanted to recreate. I'm going to do um, all three tutorials. I'm not sure if I'll do all three on YouTube, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, this one's going to definitely be on YouTube, so I hope you guys enjoy it. If you like this content, please consider subscribing. I release tutorials every week, and if you want to support the channel, I have a Patreon in the bio where I put some tutorials on there, and I have all my project files. So yeah, if you want to support me, that does go a long way. But hey, a like and a subscribe also does. So yeah, let's get straight into this. So let's start off over here by creating our geometry. So let's start with a sphere over here. Let's set that to maybe about five with about 100 segments. So let's add a displacer onto it. If you hold down shift, it should put it in there. I hold down alt, so yeah. Uh, let's go into our shading tab and set this to noise. So that's a little bit higher. Let's set it to maybe about like three, five, four. So like that should be fine. And now let's kind of change it. Uh, actually, uh, let's just see what other options. Actually, no, this Bornoia one looks quite nice. Let's just bring down the contrast by a little bit. Something like that. And yeah, that should be perfect. Let's make another one over here and let's change our noise type to something else. Something like that should be fine. Cool. So now we have two rocks. Let's connect objects and delete, connect objects and delete. And so now, oh, there we go. Connect objects and delete. Let's just call this one and two. So what we're going to do is these are our high res blocks over here. But if we had to simulate this, it would be really slow. So how we're going to get around that is we're going to grab a green mesh over here and drag one over there and two over here. Let's bring down the V mesh by a lot. So I think we can get away with potentially five. Let's see as long as it still keeps the outline of the shape. That is actually perfect. Cool. And it's just connect objects and delete over here. Cool. Let's make sure that our axis is in the center. If not, I'm gonna click over here. It's axis center. If you don't have, I mean, you won't have it over here. If you don't have it, just search for axis, and then you'll find axis center over here, and just kind of set that to the middle. Cool. So let's grab a plane over here. These are going to be our two rocks. Uh, if you don't want to do it this way where you're doing it procedurally, you can go into Mega Scans and download a small rock or whatever you want to do. Just make sure that you remesh it as well. Cool. So with our plane over here, let's just make it a bit bigger. So like that should be fine. Let's grab this and put it in a cloner. I'll put both of them in cloners for now. But let's just hide the one. So, ah, uh, uh, let's just bring them to the center. Let's also just move these rocks below. Cool. So let's set this to maybe about distance of 20 and make it 20 by 20 by 20. Actually, just do it. Let's do it 30 by 30. And then with the clone selected, let's go over here to MoGraph and go to random. Let's turn off our wide position. We only really want to scale it like this. 
and the rotation, let's just add random rotation. So if you just had to add 360 to each one, we'll just get a random rotation for each. And let's set a uniform scale of 0.5, just so there's some variations in the rocks. So there are certain things where this effect, I think would be better in Houdini. I think uh, Nick Maduka did a similar tutorial on like making particles. I mean, rocks and particles kind of come together in different shapes. So yeah, you can follow his tutorial. It's a really good tutorial, but yeah. So I think one of the big differences is that if you have really small particles, I mean, all rocks in this case, they will fall right through. I did find that if you had to increase your sub steps, it does help, but I was still, I was at like 20 sub steps and they were still falling through. So I think that's just a limitation with Cinema 4D. If you want the kind of micro detail, you would have to make your scene really big and I don't know, it just didn't really work very well. So yeah, I think uh, if you're wanting to do this in even more detail, uh, check out Nick's tutorial uh, on Houdini. But yeah, for now, this should be fine. We've got a variety of different sized rocks. With our plane selected, let's go over here into bullet tags and go collider body. And on our cloner bullet tags, and let's go rigid body. So now we're going to press play. They should fall down. Awesome, so let's just wait for them to stop moving so that we don't have to re-simulate this each time. Let's go into our cloner, go into the dynamics and say set initial state. So now when we press play, it'll automatically stay like that. So I had a little bit of struggle trying to figure out this effect. Initially, I tried using a tractor and then having a shape as like kind of the child as the attractor or the object of the attractor. And it worked, but it didn't really work very well. Um, it mainly just went to the center point and kind of went around the object. It didn't really work that well. But uh, School of Motion did a tutorial on field force. So I thought um, I would try using a field force to get this effect. And yeah, I worked pretty well with the field force. Let's go over here. I think there has been a few people who have done tutorials on field forces, but I've never really seen one that's done like this. Um, so yeah, I oh, hope <laughs> this works quite well. Uh, yeah, let's first off grab a sphere. I'm just going to use a sphere for now just to kind of give the basic idea of the tutorial and then we'll go into how we did the actual shapes. So with our sphere, it's so circle. Let's drag our circle in here and let's increase our strength. So you can already see that we have these kind of lines over here and it's kind of giving this like circular direction. So if we had to press play now. Okay, so this has happened to me a few times where as soon as I add the field force, no matter what I do, it does not work. No idea why it does that, but if we had to just copy this, copy all of this, and just go into a uh, new project over here, we might need a, yeah, you might need a re uh, set initial state. Let's go over here, set initial state. And now if we had to go to simulate forces, field force, and redo that. And now go to press play, now it works. No idea why that happens, but yeah, if you'd run into that problem, just open it up in a new project file. You'd be surprised at how much of the time just turning something on and off does fix the problem. So yeah, uh, now you'll notice that when you press play that it just kind of moves all the particles in the circular motion, which is cool, but definitely not the effect that we're going for. Uh, so the way that I was able to work around this is if we have our circle selected, if we change the distance mode from a long to radius and press play, now you'll notice that the rocks kind of move. But they're only moving over there and the reason for that is that it only has a radius of 10 centimeters over here. So if we had to increase this to about 100, you'll see that more rocks are getting pulled towards it. Let's increase this to maybe about 500. And now it should bring in more rocks. And look at that, that is the exact effect that we're looking for. Super cool. So you can also add a field onto this. Sorry. And what you can do with this is that in the like in the intro to the Rings of Power, you'll notice that especially in the beginning, things start off quite slow and then they start going quite fast. So how we can do that is just by using a, a spherical field and they're just kind of animating this moving outwards 
And as we do that, then they'll more slowly go in. Awesome. So that's a cool effect. I'm not going to do that for now, but if you're wanting to get that, I'd use the spherical field. So if you don't want to see these lines, we can just go over here into display and turn off the box. Cool. So I, I went into Illustrator and I drew out a few different shapes over here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think originally they did it practically, but I could not figure out a way of how to do this in a way that actually would work in a practical sense. So yeah, this way works for now. Just kind of draw out the shapes. And the way of doing this is that you have a lot of flexibility. So I mean, you can throw your logo in here or any shape in here and you should be able to have it where the rocks will go to the shape. So I have imported them all into Illustrator. Uh, if you just drag them into Illustrator, you'll get these like vector imports, which is super cool. So let's copy this into our project over here. And we can delete our circle for now, because we already want the circle. And let's use our first one, which is, let's say, about six. Let's set it to spline. Same thing with radius, and let's increase that to 500. Uh, so why that is happening is I think our thing is super small. Yeah, that's tiny. So let's set this to maybe about 20. Rotate it and just put it back in the center. Cool. And now we can press play. Awesome. Look at that. We can hide this. And look at that, it creates the shape. How cool is that? So yeah, now how do we get it where we can convert to this shape and then convert to another shape? Okay, let's go inside of a field force. Let's add a, another one. I see this one's also quite small. So let's make this 20 by 20 by 20. And make sure we rotate it. Cool. So now inside of our field force, how are we going to swap between them? Uh, well, sorry, let's just first add this up here. Let's set it to max and do the same thing with the distance, set it to radius and set it to 500. Cool. So in the remapping tab, we're going to use our strength over here. So let's see the keyframe of here, go to 60 and set this to zero. And then with our other one, let's set a keyframe at 100, at 60, and then at 30, let's set it to zero. So then go into the first shape, gets to around 30, and then they should start moving now. Awesome. I mean, look at that. So with this way of doing it, you can do this with as many shapes as you want to. I'm going to go and do it with these two for now. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of limitless with the uh, uh, amount of different options you can do with this. Awesome, so that looks really nice. Uh, and now we can add in a, another cloner because I found that this looks the best when you have a bunch of different types of rocks and different details. So let's do the same thing up here. Let's set this to about 20, 20. And let's set it to maybe like 30 by 30. How much did we have in here? And uh, let's set it to a little bit less, maybe like 25 by 25. You can add in a different random effect if you want to, but I think for now it should be fine. Let's copy our rigid body tag and press play. We'll have to reset initial velocity again. Um, make sure you turn off the field force first. So set them four and kind of just sit in place. Something like that should be fine. Let's just add a material onto this so that we can kind of differentiate between them like that. And now we should be able to press play and have them all move together. So yeah, I would suggest having, I think for my render, I had three different variations, one of large rocks, one of small rocks, and then one of micro rocks, but the micro rocks, I was just using spheres. So now how do we get it to swap from our low res geometry to our high res geometry? Let's go into our cloner and cache. So let's just bake all. And so now the first frame kind of stays up. I'm not too sure why it does that. But I mean, when you're rendering, just start from frame one then. And now 
we should be able to scrub through and have that. So now that it's cached, we can very easily swap these out. So let's take out our one over here. Okay, just kept some time and now it's worked. Uh, yeah, make sure you guys save uh, in case it crashes because that kind of sucks. I'm just gonna save on my desktop. And yeah, we can replace our geometry in our cloner. Just give it a little bit more time to load. Awesome. So now it's loaded. And now we have our high uh, poly ge uh, geometry in our cloner. And look, it's still running at real time. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I thought it was a pretty cool one. And yeah, uh, keep an eye out. I will do the other two tutorials coming shortly. I I guess I'll let you guys know on Instagram whether I'm going to do them on Patreon or whether I'm going to do them on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, also let me know in the comments. Um, but uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. And if you're interested in the actual project file, um, let me actually show you over here. So I have the actual project file up here, which I think looks really nice. The rocks kind of come together to form these different shapes. And just some lighting and camera movement. And yeah, and then just some work and post and you can get this looking really nice. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.